Good day, everybody. Today we have a new poem. It is called The Cargoes. And it is composed by John Mansfield, a famous English poet. Well, in this poem, in this poem, the poet describes the cargoes of three ships of three different ages. Three ships of three different ages. How many ships? Three, 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 three ships of different ages. ages. The old age, the middle age, and the modern age. Of course, by describing the cargoes of the three ships, he is trying to describe the life uh, of those ages. Yes. In the first ship, which is called the Cunic Theorem of Nineveh, what is Nineveh? <laughs> yes, which is now called Mosul. It was the capital of the Assyrian Empire. It was the capital of the Assyrian Empire. Uh, from the name of the ship, we know that this. Uh, and uh, this uh, age is the old age. This age is what? Old. The old age. It was at the time of King Suleiman. Yes. The ship came from Ofer. Ofer. This place, Ofer, is not is existing now. We know about it from the Old Testament. Was it of Old Testament? We know about it from the Old Testament. We know that it lies in the southern part of the Red Sea. Where does that uh, place lie? In the southern part of the Red Sea. Of course, the Red Sea has two sides. The Arabian side and the African side. We don't know whether it is on the Arabian side or on the African side. But when we read the poem, we may yeah. find a word that tells us that uh, the, the, the place is lying on this side or that. Okay? This ship carries ivory, sandalwood, apes, wine, and so on. What do you know from this cargo? Is it the cargo of a luxury life or a poor life? Luxury life. See? The ivory, the ivory is used for building the throne of King Suleiman and his palaces. See? And the apes and peacocks were used for entertainment. So it seems that life at that time was a luxury life. See? The second ship is from the Middle Ages. How do we know that it is from the Middle Ages? Not only the cargo, but from the movement of the ship. The ship was driven by, its, by air, by using sails. What of sails? Well, the cargo of that ship also reflect or reflects what? The life at that time. The third ship is a British ship. From the description of the ship, we know that the poet does not like life in the modern age because he describes the ship as dirty, and the cargoes of that ship are not expensive, they are cheap, and so on. Now, let us refer to our book and read the poem itself. Yes. Page seven. Page seven. Q 
Punic Urian of Nineveh from distant Ophir. Punic Urian. What is a Punic Urian? Is a ship. Like Titanic. Like Titanic. You know Titanic? Yes. Yes. So that ship of Nineveh, Nineveh is what we call Mosul now. What was Nineveh at that time? It was the capital of Assyria. It came from distant offer, distant, very far offer. Offer is a place, as I have just said, which we don't know now, but we know from the Old Testament that it lies in the southern part of the Red Sea. Okay? Bringing home to heaven in sunny Palestine, rowing broke. Rowing. So the ship was driven by rowing. Rowing. The ship was driven by rowing. Yes. It was driven by rowing. And it was coming back home to Haven. Haven, Haven means harbor. It was coming back to heaven in sunny Palestine. In sunny Palestine. Yes. Look, he has used the word sunny and he has referred to a sunny weather in order to show that he likes that age and the life of that age, sunny Palestine. Western people are interested, even now, are interested in sunny weather because they rarely see the sun. They rarely see the sun. So it is a lovely day when the sun shines. When the sun is shining, people go on picnics, they go to the sea, they have happy time, they enjoy themselves because of that nice weather. So, indeed, using or referring to a sunny weather shows us that the poet likes the life of that age. Yes. With a cargo, with a cargo. <coughs> Look, you remember when we say, uh, what's your name? Huh? Yeah. Riyan came to college with her books. What does that mean? She, she comes or she is coming and her books are also coming walking with her? Or she is carrying? Yes. With her books means carrying her books. So when the ship came with, with uh, a cargo, carrying a cargo, it means carrying a cargo of ivory. Ivory. What's of ivory? Ah, very good. Look, where is ivory found? In Arabia or in Africa? Africa. <laughs> yes. Now we can find the answer to our past question, to the question we have asked, we have already asked about the location of Afar, whether it is on the Arabian side or the African side. Now we have found the answer from this word. So, we can safely say that Afar lies on the African side because ivory is found where? In Africa. And apes, apes, monkeys. Where are monkeys found? In Africa. So it means that Afar, again, it means that Afar is in Africa. And peacocks. Peacocks. You know the name of peacocks? Yes. Well, what is, what is the value of apes and peacocks here? It means 
that people are enjoying themselves and they use they use what apes and peacocks for entertainment sandalwood yes yes cedarwood and the sweet white wine yes so they have cedarwood sandalwood and uh, sweet white wine yes this is the first shift the second shift a stately a Spanish galleon coming from the Estimos. Well, a stately, it wasn't of stately. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, a Spanish galleon. You see, from the word stately, we, we know that he also likes, he also likes what? This age and the life of this age. Coming down from Estimos, you know, we have Panama, Estimos. Yes. Yes. Dipping through the tropics. Dip it, dipping means sinking through the tropics. Through the tropics. Yes. Yes. By the palm green shores. How were the shores? How were the shores? They were green. What made the shores green? The palm. Yes. <coughs> With a cargo of diamond. You see, again, the cargo is an expensive one. Cargo of diamond. Emerald. Yes. I mean, it's this. Uh, a tro a tropic, a tropas. All these things are a precious stones. And sinan, sinanum, sinanum. Well, this is a type of spice. And gold moderates, moderates, coins, moderates, coins. Yes, gold coins. Yes, coins made of gold. Again, this cargo reflects the life of people at that time. Okay? When the cargo, when the cargo uh, includes sugar, yes, rice, potatoes, and so on, which are used for food, and there is no diamonds, no emeralds, no, it means that life in that country at that age is very poor. Yes. Because people cannot buy such expensive stones, that so they are not, not uh, so rich to buy them, yes. The third ship, the third ship, dirty British coaster. Coaster is a ship, a ship that is used for short distances. You know, we have the minibus in Najaf, we have the minibus coaster. Coaster is used for short distances. For example, to Karbala, to Hilla, yes. but they cannot be used to uh, travel to Basra or to Syria or to Jordan, no. Yes? So, uh, the same for ships. When there is a coastal ship, it means a ship that moves up along the coasts. Yes, along the coasts. With a salt cake, a smoke stack. The chimney, the chimney of that ship is covered with salt. Yes. 
And from this world, from the star, uh, the star, we know that this ship belongs to what? To the modern time, to the modern age. Why? Because this ship is driven by what? Engine. By engines. You see? Yes. So it is, it may be at the 16th century or the 19th century, at the, at the time of the Industrial Revolution, uh, at the time when they invented uh, machines, just like that. So it belongs to the modern age. Booting is through the channel. Look, booting. The word boot is used for the movement of a goat. The movement of a goat. What was the movement of a goat? Mars. Yes, of course, this word, the use of booting to, discover, uh, to describe the movement of the ship, tells us that the poet hates this age and the life of this age. In the mud, March days, look, in the mud, March days, look, the description of the weather is also intended, like cargoes, it is also intended to describe the life of that age, or the idea of the poet about that age, you see? So when he uses bad, uh, mad, March days, yes, why are, why are the days of March mad? Because the, the weather is always changing. In the morning it is cold, in the midday it is hot, in the afternoon there is rain, uh, and, uh, at night there are storms. So the world has changed, the, 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 the weather is changing. So we call it mad. We call it mad. Even in Arabic, we, we are not interested in the days of March. We say that March is the month of storms and rains and uh, dramatic changes in weather. Yes. <laughs> With a cargo of tiny coal, tiny coal is the cheapest coal in Britain is the cheapest, very cheap, yes. Road rail, road rail, you know the meaning of rail? Rail? Road rail. And pig lead, pig lead, what, what is the meaning of pig lead? It is a blocks of lead. Yes, blocks. Yes. Firewood. You see? No cedar wood, no sandalwood, firewood. Iron work. Yes. And cheap, tiny trays. And cheap, very cheap. Uh, tiny or tin trays. Cheap tin trays. Yes. Cheap containers. Cheap um, articles. Now, I'd like one of you to give me the general meaning of this mo uh, poem. The general meaning in one sentence. No. Can you come here? No? Yes, come. Well, who can put it in another way, yes? Uh, the power uh, the secret of three ships uh, of three different days. The poet describes <coughs> the three ships of three different ages. This is the general meaning. You know, 
if we want to appreciate a poem, the first step is to give the general meaning. The second step is to give, give the detailed meaning. And the third step is to give what? The intention of the poem. Yes. For appreciation, to appreciate, to appreciate a poem, we have to give, give what? The general meaning? The general meaning? Detailed meaning? And the intention of the poem. Look, of course, in order to appreciate a poem, we have many, st many steps. Many steps. These steps concern meaning. But later on, we have other steps to appreciate, for example, uh, the artistic devices used by the poets, you see, the rhyming, uh, the figures of speech used, for example, are there alliterations, metaphors, similes, that will be studied by us later on. But for this stage, we have to deal with meaning in order to appreciate and in order to understand the meaning of a poem, we have to follow these three steps. Uh, of course, after reading the poems, uh, the poem for many times, you read the poem for many times and then give the general meaning, the detailed meaning, and the intention of the poem. Well, of course, we may have different answers and different ideas. All ideas are respected. I respect all the ideas if you can prove them. For example, when we say that uh, the first ship belong or belongs to the old age, or when we, when we say that offer lies in the African side, we have proved that. Why? Because when we find uh, ivory, when we find monkeys, all these things are found when? In Africa. So we can safely say that offer lies in Africa. <coughs> Again, if you find any idea, if you think of any idea, go ahead, mention it, write it, but I'd like you to prove it, to, ju to justify your answer. Okay? In poetry, in poetry, we may, we may get many explanations because poetry depends on the imagination of the reader. Your imagination may be not like mine or like hers. Everyone may imagine the situation and may have an explanation and that explanation is respected by me and by any a critic or any lecturer. If you prove your idea, if you prove your idea, if you give reasons, if you give justifications, yes. So the general meaning is that the poet describes the poet describes the three ships of three different ages. Now, what is the detailed meaning? Now we come to the ships one by one. Who can give me a rough idea, a rough idea about uh, the detailed meaning? A stanza by stanza. The first stanza is the description of the first ship. 
Well, who can tell me the detailed meaning? Yes? Yes? Pass the thumbs up. The poet described an old age. An old age? Yes? How do you know that? By his son, by the son of No. And by cargo. From the cargo? No. From the name of the ship and from old Nineveh. Yes. You see? And he likes uh, this age. And the poet likes his, uh, this age. Yes. yes. How do you know that he likes his age, this age? How do you know that he likes this age? How? Uh, by describing the, the beautiful weather. Very good. By describing the goods and the beautiful weather. And this description of the uh, cargoes or the goods or the description of uh, the weather is intended to show his impression or his idea about that age, his appreciation of that age. Yes, thank you. Yes, we come to the second standard. We come to the second stanza. What is the second stanza about? What is the second stanza about? No? Someone else? Who else? The second stanza. In the second stanza, the poet describes Najar, yes? No. So what does he describe in the second stanza? Yes, another ship. Yes. What is that ship? Is it an Iraqi ship? An English ship? Spanish ship? Yes. And again, it carries cargoes which reflect the life of that age. What about the third standard? What about the third standard? Yes. He describes a ship of the modern age. How do you know that the ship is of the modern age? How? Because it is driven by engines. You see? And not by sails or by rowing. No. You know, in the distant past, people were used to drive their ships by rowing. Then, yes, there was a big progress. They used sails. They used what? Sails. Later on, they used engines instead of sails. But when did people use uh, engines? In the modern age, by the way, it is modern and not modern. Modern age. In the modern age. Yes. Does the poet? How does the poet describe this ship? Or what? What? What is that ship? What is that ship? Is it a Syrian ship, an Iranian ship, or a Saudi ship? It is. A British ship. It is what? British. A British ship. How does he describe that ship? Yes. He describes that ship as a dirty ship. This reflects his idea about the modern age and life in the modern <coughs> age. Okay? Oh. Well, he also describes the weather here. Yes. What does he say about the weather? March, 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 March days. March. So, do you like March days? No. 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 Even in Britain, they don't like March days because the weather the is always changing. Yes. On the same day, you may have different types of weather. You see? So, we call it Mad March. 
So even the weather des described here is intended to reflect the idea of the poet about that age. Okay? Now, let us read the poem. Let us read the poem. And if you have any difficult word, any difficult expression, any difficult line, don't hesitate. Go ahead and ask me. I'm glad to receive your questions and to answer them. Okay? Yes. Okay. Let us read. Who can read? Yes, please read. By the way, how do you find the poetry? Is it difficult or interesting? Yes. This is the most difficult. It is supposed. It is supposed to be the most difficult subject in this year. So what about the other subjects? They are much easier. So studying English is not difficult. And it is not boring. It is interesting. You like it. You enjoy it. OK? Yes. Read. Yes. Offer. Rowing home to heaven in sunny Palestine. In sun Is there any difficult word here? Do you understand it? Yes. Okay. With a cargo, it came carrying a cargo of what? Ivory. Ivory. And apes, yes, and peacocks. By the way, have you seen a peacock? You know it? Who doesn't know a peacock? Who hasn't seen a peacock? All of you? All of you have seen the peacock? Yes. Oh, that's good. Is it an interesting creature? Is it an interesting creature? Is a peacock an interesting creature? Yes. 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 An interesting bird? Yes. Yeah, you like it? Yes. Yes. But a peacock is famous for being proud. Yes. It is always proud. Yes. And tries to, sh to give himself a bigger size. <laughs> yes. Just, just to attract the attention of people. Yes. To attract what? Attention the attention, the attention of, people. of people. And to say, look, this, this bird is powerful and lovely and courageous. You see? Yes. Okay. And apes. Have you seen apes? Yes. Really? Have you seen an a, a monkey? No. And you? Ha, no. Have you ever been to a zoo? In Iraq, in Iran? No? Yes? So, you saw uh, the, the monkey there. Where? In Iran? Yes. At the zoo in Baghdad. Yes. We may have a picnic to Baghdad. Yes. And see the zoo. Yes. Yes, read. That's enough. Yes. You have finished the first stanza, and thank you very much for your good reading. I uh, want another good reader, though all of you are good readers. I'm sure that all of you are good readers. 
Yes. Who wants to read? Yes, you. There is a Spanish galleon coming from the Astemos. Yes. <coughs> the tropic by the palm green shores. Yes. The cargo of diamonds, emeralds, yes. amethysts, yes. topaz, and cinema, and gold is... And gold? Moid. Yes, thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. What about the third stanza? Yes, you. By the way, I like your bird. You see? That is very nice. Yes. Dirty British coaster. Is it a coaster car? Is it a coaster car? It is a ship. Yes. Yeah. Quiet. Yes. Booting through the channel. Yes. The channel that in the cool. Yes. Roll rail a road rail. Pig lead. Yes. Well, that is fine. Now, let me dictate you, let me dictate you about this poem. The general meaning, the detailed meaning, and the intention. By the way, what is the intention of the poet? What does the poet want to say? What does the poet want to say? Yes. Than the modern age. Very good. That is the intention. The old age is better than the modern age. Thank you very much. Well, let us write something about clean the board, please.
it was or it existed at the time of King Suleiman. Or Solomon, I don't know how they is. Yes. It, you, uh, it brought, it brought cargoes cargoes from offer the place of her is not existing now Cargoes, the cargo of the ship, of the ship, reflect, reflect the luxury of life. at that time. The description you feel that there is a contrast comparison yes we need this later on when we analyze the structure of the poem we need it so this in this poem we have a contrast and we'll deal with it later on we'll study it later on 